Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Highly scrutinized icon crash need not have happened again. Attention iOS users, WingX upgrades may be needed ASAP. And SpaceX could be test flying Starhopper this weekend. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm Sophie Herlock. Another Icon A5 accident has been reviewed by the NTSB, leading to questions about the airplane and the way the aircraft is being operated. According to the preliminary, the pilot-rated passenger who was seated in the left seat at the time of the accident stated the weather was not the best and that the wind was shifting 180 degrees. He said he told the pilot in command this sentiment and that it took four takeoff attempts to get airborne. After the second attempt, he said he told the PIC that it would not break his heart if they did not go. He said that the airplane felt very sluggish and acted as if it did not want to come off the water. When they did get airborne, they were about 100 feet from the trees, headed straight towards them, and the airplane felt very heavy. When asked to elaborate on the weight, he said the PIC told him they had 485 pounds available and only three quarters of a tank of fuel. A post-accident weight and balance calculation based upon the most recent available weight and balance and information provided to a Federal Aviation Administration aviation safety inspector by the PIC revealed that the airplane was about 70 pounds over max gross weight and outside of the weight and center of the gravity envelope limits contained within the pilot's operating handbook. We'll be right back with Around the Patch after these messages. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. A new logotipo. A new factor. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back, let's take a quick look at some interesting stories flying out of the aviation industry. It's time for today's trip around the patch. A recent AAIB update provides some surprising detail about the accident that took the life of a passenger and is non-IFR rated pilot flying at night, over water, and in or near icing conditions. But it isn't what you might expect. Soccer star and passenger Emiliano Sala had been exposed to high levels of carbon monoxide prior to the plane crash, which claimed his life back on January 21st. The pilot's remains have not yet been found, but it stands to reason that he, too, would have been similarly affected. Embraer's new Praetor 500 mid-sized business jet was granted its type certificate by Brazil's Civil Aviation Authority, having been announced on October of 2018 at the NBAA BACE. The type certificate was awarded during a ceremony at the Latin American Business Aviation Conference and Exhibition. Right after being sworn in as the new FAA Administrator, Steve Dixon started to set the language he'll be using as he goes forward, as far as the 737 MAX is concerned. And I want to again be clear and absolutely committed that the FAA is a safety-driven organization and safety is my highest priority. This plane will not fly in commercial service again until I'm completely assured that it is safe to do so. The FAA is not following any timeline for returning the aircraft to service. Rather, we're going where the facts lead us and diligently ensuring that all technology and training is, is present and correct before the plane returns to passenger service. 
Sierra Nevada Corporation has selected United Launch Alliance as the launch vehicle provider for the Dream Chaser spacecraft six NASA missions to the International Space Station. The Dream Chaser will launch aboard ULA's Vulcan Centaur rockets for its cargo resupply and return services to the space station starting in 2021. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The Sling 2, a modern, economical flight training airplane for today's pilots. 120 knot crews, sporty handling, sliding bubble canopy, modern glass panel, and dependable Rotax power. Available in LSA or kit versions. Check it out at AirplaneFactory.com. The folks at WingX have alerted us to a possible issue for users of iOS services. WingX published a notice saying, Starting yesterday, moving map data for WingX Pro 7 version 8 will no longer be available for download. Moving map data is available for the new WingX version 9 with its much improved moving map. What iOS users have to do is this, upgrade to Wing X version 9 to ensure continued downloading of data cycle information. Wing X version 9 uses a completely new and improved moving map, which requires new moving map files, such as the VFR sectionals, IFR low and high and routes, etc. Therefore, the company recommends that you do not update Wing X immediately prior to a flight. After installing Wing X version 9, you will need to download the new moving map files. They add that beginning August 15, 2019, all users are required to upgrade to Wing X version 9 for continued operation. This means that users using Wing X Pro 7 will need to upgrade to Wing X version 9 in order to avoid any gaps in service. The very rudimentary test vehicle designed to prove some of the capabilities of SpaceX's next generation rocket system may be trying for a little more altitude this weekend. Known as Starhopper, the vehicle is but a small part of what might eventually be a major space transport system, with other versions already under construction in Texas and Florida. Elon Musk hopes to see the vehicle in service as early as 2021. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has mentioned that the test vehicle will attempt to reach an altitude of 650 feet and return under power, much like the capabilities already demonstrated by a large number of Falcon 9 first stages over the past few years. Starhopper made at least one known test hop July 25th to a test of some 65 feet. The Starhopper test vehicle, unlike the full-blown system, will only be powered by a single Raptor engine and will be flown from SpaceX's Boca Chica, Texas test site. And that wraps up our week, everyone. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. And please subscribe, tweet, and like us. And if you want to read up on some aviation and aerospace news this weekend, head on over to aero-news.net. I'll see you all right back here Monday.